Hi everyone, good to see you all again. Welcome to my session on tie and dye. Bandini is an ancient Indian technique of tie and dye textile decoration done by plucking the cloth with the fingernails into many tiny bindings that form a figurative design. The term Bandini is derived from the Sanskrit language which means to bind or to tie. Today, most of these Bandini making centers are situated in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Sindh, Punjab regions as well as in Tamil Nadu where it is known as Sunguri. Today, let's watch a demonstration of some of these interesting Bandini techniques that you can easily create at home. Crumple technique. Crumple technique is another interesting tie and dye technique. So let's learn how to do it today. You will need the following supplies for the crumple technique tie and dye. A white piece of fabric which is cotton and starch removed. A ziplock cover to save your fabric after dyeing. An old bin cover to cover your work area. A bowl of water. Two cups of water. One for washing your brushes and one for mixing with your colors. A palette to mix your colors. Rubber bands. Flat and round brushes from Faber Castell. Faber Castell acrylic paints or fabric colors. These colors are versatile. They can be used on any surface like wood, metal, ceramic, and leather and other fabrics too. They come in many colors. There is a whole range of colors here. Uh, you also have pearl color in this set which you can mix with other colors to make shiny pearl colors. So let's learn how to make the crumple technique using fabric paints on fabrics. As a first step, you're going to take your fabric. This fabric is a cotton fabric and it's starch removed. You can soak the fabric for half an hour to 45 minutes in a cup in a bowl of water and it will be removing the seizing from the fabric and then it's ready for you to start with your tie and dye process. After it's dry, you can take the fabric and soak it again in some water. This is going to wet the fabric so that it is damp enough to draw all the paints inside it. I'm just going to squeeze it, take off the excess water. The fabric should not be wet, it has to be damp. So make sure when you squeeze, there should not be any water coming out from the fabric. Once when you have squeezed out the excess water from the fabric, the fabric is now ready to take the dyeing process. So I'm just going to spread the fabric here. We are going to try the crumple technique. For the crumple technique, you're going to start scrunching the fabric like this. So you'll start scrunching the fabric like this. And we will take a shape like this. Once when you finish scrunching it like this, you can secure the scrunch by using some rubber bands. It doesn't have to be too tight. Based on the volume of the fabric, you can decide how many other rubber bands you can use them and you can keep it ready. Once when you have scrunched it like this, we will start mixing the Faber Castell acrylic paints and get it ready for the dyeing process. In my palette, I have taken now sap green from Faber Castell acrylic paints as well as Persian blue and I have kept it ready. We can just add a few drops of water to it to dilute the color and get the required consistency to apply on the fabric. So we're just going to mix it nicely with a few drops of water in a flowing consistency. Since our fabric is already damp, we don't have to add too much of water to the paint. The colors can easily be able to penetrate to the fabric. So just rinse our brush and mixing the next color the same way and we're getting it ready. Once when your colors are ready, we can start with the dyeing process. So just take the color and start dabbing it on the fabric randomly like this. Since the fabric is wet, you will see that the color is starting to blot on the fabric. Same way you can try with the next color in random application. Make sure you push in the color, press it hard with your brush so that it moves into the fabric, it penetrates well. 
flip this fabric over and apply the same way on the other side with these two colors and leave it to set for two to three hours in a ziplock cover and then we can remove the rubber bands to see the technique. So once when I finished applying like this, this will be set into a ziplock cover and I will leave it to rest for two, three hours and then we will see how it's come. After two, three hours of setting time, the fabric is now ready to be unknotted. So we can now remove the rubber bands that we have done for the crumple technique. Carefully like this. The fabric will be slightly damp, won't be fully dry because we have crumpled the fabric like that. So we'll remove the rubber bands and you will be able to see the crumple design on the fabric like this. So if you look at it, it has got a lot of random patterns on the fabric. So this is how our completed crumple technique of tie and dye will look on the fabric. In the same way, I've done the crumple technique which we did on the small piece of fabric can also be tried on a t-shirt. I did the same thing on a t-shirt but this time I've used yellow, blue and green so that I got this kind of a shaded crumple effect on the fabric. Once when your technique is done and when your fabric is dry, after 24 hours you can fix the colors by ironing the fabric by setting it on cotton, you can iron it and you can get it ready. The colors will get fixed to the fabric permanently on one hot iron. Once when that is ready, it's ready for you to use it and you can wash it. Uh, washing, always I would request you to do a gentle wash and always do gentle uh, mild detergents for this and always do a shade dry. So I hope you like this tutorial on making a crumple technique using fabric paints on fabrics.